Good evening. It is the rush hour from hell. This is our live shot of the 417 taken from our camera on top of the baseball stadium at the Vanier Parkway, where traffic is finally starting to move. Auto police tell us tonight parts of the city, though, are in complete gridlock. It's taking drivers up to an hour and a half to get out of the downtown from Parliament Hill to the Queensway. Almost two hours from the downtown core to Canada and Orleans. That is a two to three hour commute home for some. CTV's Vanessa Lee now on the latest on the strike that's led to this traffic chaos. Rush hour is bad enough on the best of days. Add a transit strike and it can be even longer and more grueling than ever. Many people left work early to get a head start, hoping to avoid the repeat of a stressful morning. OC Transpo workers returned to the picket line, once again delaying cars going into the City Hall complex. This driver's frustration boiled over. Union officials who were asked today to comment on the frustration say they will no longer be speaking to the media. Tempers flared elsewhere in the core as parking lots filled up quickly. Apparently the lot's full. Apparently they won't let her get in, turn around and get out. So now she's trying to negotiate it with them and uh, I can't back out. So we're all kind of stuck here. It's very hard to find a parking spot anywhere. I've been down here for about half an hour circling. Some people lucky enough to find a spot were also in for a surprise. Many lots are no longer offering an early bird rate, a development no one is happy about after a long commute. It took me two and a half hours from Orleans in a car. <laughs> so it was very long and very stressful. <laughs> Compare that to yesterday. Yesterday I stayed home because I didn't want... <laughs> I didn't want to go through the whole car thing. Rachel Factor is giving her co-workers a ride to do her part in relieving congestion. I just like to help out, so, and I mean, I have to come to work too. Bus lanes on most Ottawa streets are open to cars. Queensway bus lanes are not. With all the extra vehicles on the road, city officials are hoping more people will find ways to share and maybe make the commute a little easier for everyone. Vanessa Lee, CTV News. Well, the only development in the transit strike was played out in a courtroom. The City of Ottawa is seeking an injunction to remove pickets from the Elgin Street and Laurier Avenue entrances at City Hall. The city says people have been injured on those picket lines. And the Ontario Transportation Ministry is concerned about backups leading onto the Queensway. As drivers battle gridlock tonight, the union and the city are waging their own war, a public relations battle that only one side can win. CTV's Joanne Schnur now with that story. For a guy who sells cars for a living, Stefan Polichuk has a lot to say about buses, and in particular about the head of the bus union. To me, the union leader needs to be changed. That is definitely not a professional guy. My 12-year-old daughter can answer better questions. Dana Clark believes the strike is designed to hurt the public. I feel sorry for the bus drivers, and I don't like the unions manipulating everybody because it's not worth it. Nobody wins in a strike. It's pretty hard to win the public relations battle in a strike, especially when people's lives are being impacted. Add to that a crumbling economy. Inconveniencing people. What's wrong with that? And what many perceive to be an unsympathetic union boss. Andre is an incredibly passionate individual, and sometimes when he, when he uh, makes certain comments, it's, it's um, picked up the wrong way. There's solidarity among the trade unions and among picketers who were concerned yesterday their message wasn't getting out. Everybody's telling, saying we're making 100000 a year. Nobody makes 100000 a year. A few, few guys do, but they're working their, their years off to make that kind of money. Today, the message was to keep mum. We were told that if the media wants to talk, to talk to Andre Canelli, because there's too many stories going out. And the problem is the media is putting out whatever they feel they want to put out and the wrong message is being put across. The Amalgamated Transit Union says it's no longer doing any interviews with the media. It's preferring instead to take out newspaper ads to tell the real story. Stefan Polichuk doesn't really care how it's all handled as long as it's resolved. We are in a miserable world right now. Let's put our heads together and get out of this mess. Joanne Schneider, CTV News. 
Alain Mercier is General Manager of OC Transpo. Mr. Mercier, have there been any attempts to get the two sides back to the bargaining table? No, at this time we're still waiting for a signal from the union. What kind of signal? Uh, to whether they want to get back to the table and try to get everybody back to work. Perhaps maybe tweaking the offer a little bit would do that, do you think? Well, I think first of all we have to sit down and understand what the principles of uh, moving forward would be. Mr. Mercier, um, the scheduling has been the main stumbling block in this. Uh, it has been for quite some time. If you knew that that was going to be the main irritant, why wasn't this dealt with back in March? Well, actually, uh, we're a little surprised by, uh, by some of the statements that have been out there. We actually were trying to resolve scheduling as a joint management union process. Uh, prior to negotiations, uh, the union had asked us that they wanted this part of negotiations. Uh, we, uh, we agreed to that position, and we've been actively working with uh, through negotiations to try to uh, get that resolution that they were looking for. And so we're committed to that. You've heard the union accuse the city of wanting this strike. Can you respond to that? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, we're, we, we understand the situation that, uh, you know, how this affects transit users and the uh, general city. Uh, we all are, are, are feeling the effects of a, of, of a transit strike. Uh, even I have to go pick up my kids at school. So uh, no one is interested in this strike. Um, the union and the drivers have been getting an earful. What are you hearing at City Hall? Well, we're, we're certainly hearing a sense that uh, both the community and even our own employees uh, are, are looking to find a way to see what is it that we have on the table, what does it mean to us, and how can we get this thing resolved. And so, how can you get it resolved? Well, first of all, what we've, we've taken the uh, step to uh, communicate out the nature of our offer because our understanding was that our final offer was not brought to the membership. And so there's a lot of questions by all employees to that regard. And so I've communicated to them directly what was in our offer. And uh, we're getting a sense that employees just want to have a chance to, uh, to decide on it for themselves. Okay, so this could be a while then. Mr. Mercier. Hopefully not. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. And a flashback tonight to a previous OC Transpo strike that also hit the capital during the winter. Traffic problems on day one of the 1996 bus strike, which lasted for 24 days. At that time, 1,800 bus drivers and mechanics hit the picket lines over the issue of benefits. The strike took the cheer out of Christmas retail sales. In 1979, OC Transpo drivers went on strike in August for 20 days. It was known as the five-cent bus strike because a nickel an hour separated both sides. Adversity brings out the best in people. You're showing that during the strike. We introduce you to Patsy Niles, who relies on bus service to visit her husband at the Ottawa Cancer Centre. Many of you offered to help, and we put you in touch. Her first drive is with the Good Samaritan tomorrow morning. And we introduced you to one-week-old baby Kaya last night at 11.30. Kaya's mom, Mary Ann, was unable to get to her doctor's appointment to have staples removed after her C-section. Her dad, Jason, can't get to his restaurant job to make money for a cab. One of our viewers has offered to drive Mary Ann to the doctor's. Another has offered to raise money for the family to help getting around a little bit easier. So, how are you doing? We'd like you to share with other viewers how you're getting to and where you have to and back. We've set up a special place on our website. Your idea may work for someone else. With much lower profile for 24 days now, technical and administrative staff at Canada Post have been